Okay, we're going to get started. Um, thanks everybody for joining. Uh, this webinar is going to preview one of our upcoming File Catalyst 3.5 features, and that's our S3 uh, integration. So my name is Chris Bailey. I'm the CEO and co-founder of uh, Unlimitech and uh, creator of File Catalyst. And I was one of the uh, primary programmers uh, actually involved in this particular project. So what we're going to talk about today is just touch on what Amazon S3 actually is very, very briefly actually. Talk about some current ways that you might connect S3 and what's the issue with transferring data with those methods. Why is it slow? Um, we're going to talk about how we're actually integrated with S3. So we'll go over the architecture a little bit. I'm going to go over a, a, a quick demo. It's not going to be extensive. Uh, showing the performance, et cetera. It'll just show more or less the, the interface, how everything is set up. I'll do a couple transfers uh, just to show you how that will, that will work. But uh, we're still uh, in a beta phase, so I'm not going to go too, too in-depth on that. Um, talk a little bit about uh, the ways that you can use our File Catalyst server to integrate with S3 and how you can then present S3 buckets and, and folders and files to your users the different ways that you can connect to File Catalyst Server uh, to see your S3 and, and the different ways you've configured it. And then a little bit about what's next um, for us with S3 before we release it to the public and then what's coming after that. And then of course at the end we'll have time for some questions. And I'll get you to just type the questions into the little questions area for the go to uh, webinar box. It should be on your right hand side. So let's start off with um, what is Amazon S3. So a simple storage service. Um, it's an online file store web service from Amazon, as you all know. Um, the benefits of this uh, versus your local storage, as, as many people are aware, is that uh, you have high bandwidth access to it from anywhere. Um, any cloud applications can access it at high speed. It scales on demand, so you don't need to worry about scaling out your, your current NAS or SAN solution. Um, it's more durable because it's not physical. Um, it's it's highly redundant. So you have a lot of benefits in going to the cloud. Um, you also have the fact that it's a, it's an operational expense. You're paying on the fly. You're not paying for something up front that then you know depreciates over time. So it's sometimes a little bit easier to roll into budgets and, and plan. So just that's again it's just a touch on s3 I'm sure if you're here uh, at this webinar you're you're aware of what s3 is so I'm not going to go too in detail on that so there's there's lots of options to transfer files into s3 currently um, some options would be the file system driver so that's your typical map a drive uh, locally so it could be on your on your local machine and then it's going into s3 or you could map a drive Okay, I've been told that uh, you couldn't hear me, so I'm going to start this again here uh, with this slide. So Amazon S3, as I mentioned, simple storage service, uh, has some benefits. Uh, high bandwidth, scales on demand, um, operational expense versus capital expense. Uh, lots of ways to transfer files into S3. Uh, file system drivers, so map a drive or mount it on your, your uh, Unix-based system. Um, then you can actually save files with any application and they get automatically moved into S3. Uh, you have your FTP-like clients, so there's a you know CloudBerry or different clients out there, um, different web interfaces. I think S3 actually provides a web interface to upload and download files. Uh, those all have one thing in common, and they're all using HTTP to transfer files across the WAN, and therefore they're slow because of the latency that they're they're impeded by, just like any other PCP-based transfers. So. What S3 did to improve the situation with HTTP is to allow you to do multi-part uploads and multi-part downloads. What we've done done is taken that and integrated it into a, a file system driver uh, within File Catalyst. Okay. We're what I've done here is I've put together a little diagram of how we're actually integrated. And the key here is that the actual transfers we're doing with the Amazon SDK with the multi-part HTTP uploads is all within the Amazon infrastructure. Everything outside the Amazon infrastructure is using UDP acceleration. 
So this is the, the key area that you're bypassing. You're using UDP acceleration on this higher latency uh, area, which is the WAN. Then when you have the infrastructure close together, S3 and EC2, that's where you have lower latency, and therefore multi-part HTTP acceleration will get you pretty good performance. So the way we integrated it was we've wrapped up the Amazon SDK, which gives us the multi-part functionality, into something called Java NIO. Um, as many of you are aware, we're a Java-based application, provides a lot of flexibility for us. What NIO is, is essentially it allows you to create a file system driver. Um, that allows us to transparently plug it in to our file catalyst applications with very little impact on our code. Now we can access um, anything that's underneath Java NIO as if it's a regular file system. We don't have to worry about all the ins and outs of dealing with an object store like S3. So we've, we've actually taken that API, the Java NIO, wrapped the SDK of Amazon's into it, and all file operations are now available to us to integrate with your, your storage. Of course, the transfers, when we do a write to a file, are actually translated into a multi-part HTTP operation that goes to S3. Because we've done it in this way, all the features that are available in File Catalyst Server are available when you're going to S3 as well, such as resuming your broken transfers. Some other competing products don't support that. MD5 verifications, the list goes on. Um, the other key thing to note is that the files are never landing on your EC2 instance. They're actually going directly from File Catalyst uh, client when you're sending them being proxied essentially through File Catalyst Server and landing directly on S3. There's no caching them locally to create the illusion of speed. So I'm just going to do a quick demo of what we put together. I've actually got a, an instance running here. Actually, before I show you that, let me go back here. I've got my S3 management console open. So just to show you what I've got here, I've got all my buckets. I've created a bucket here for S3 webinar. And as you can see, there's a few files in it right now. This is probably a previous test of mine. So it's just a couple of one gig files in a subfolder. Okay. So you know when you see what I show you, you're actually looking at the same, the same thing. So this is a remote desktop into uh, my EC2 instance that I have running here. I'm going to close this guy up here. So just to give you an idea of how you'd get started with File Catalyst Server, and if you use File Catalyst Server, you're fairly familiar with it. Um, we have a new section on the left-hand side called File Systems, and here's where I've added my Amazon S3. So if I go and I edit this, you'll see that the, you, have a, you have your username, which is essentially your, your uh, public key, and then you have your private key, your secret key below, and the host name. This would be useful if you want to connect to different regions. Let's say your S3 bucket was located in Oregon region or in Europe. You can specify the host name um, that matches the region of your S3 bucket. If you use the default, the S3 Amazon AWS.com, everything just gets routed through Virginia, or it tries to make its best guess uh, where to route it through. But in order to get the best performance, you'd want to have uh, this matching your region. So once I've set it up, I can click test. It's actually going to go through some quick steps. It, it actually makes sure the driver is installed, make sure it can connect, check your authentication, check that the root path is there, and then it actually tries to get a listing of your buckets. Okay. Once you have the file system defined, now you can go and edit an existing user, and you can actually set the home directory to point to Amazon S3. So here we have a new drop-down once you have different file systems available to you, where you can actually select S3 as the source. I can now click Browse, and it actually is going to browse my... Uh, ah, let's cancel out of that for a second. As I said, beta software. This was working uh, a few minutes ago. So I click Browse. There we go. Um, it's actually going to connect and show my buckets. And I can see now, here's the buckets that were listed. I can browse down deep into it if I want to. I can select a subfolder in any one of these buckets as my home directory. Okay, so I've got this one pre-configured to point to my S3 account and the S3 webinar bucket. So on the uh, that's on the server side. That's really all there is to it. Uh, I'll get into uh, virtual folders and files in a, in a moment. Um, I have my hot folder running here. So what I've done, just with any other client application, I've actually connected my hot folder to my S3 server, which is it's all actually physically on the same machine. Um, there's nothing else really to see here. Uh, what I can do is I can connect 
using the connect link here, and I can see now I'm browsing my my subfolder. I don't see any of the buckets. I'm I'm jailed into the particular folder that I selected on the server side. Okay, so I can transfer files through there. Or I've I've actually configured a task here, um, so I can go in, check the activity, clear the logs here from my my previous runs, and I just click start. I've actually pointed it to a local folder here um, that has a one gig file, and these are the files that you saw. I'd already transferred them previously. So this is transferring now directly into S3, um, these files. So they're going to land in my, my bucket, essentially. So what this allows you to do is transfer files into your S3 account the same way you transfer files into any other home directory that you would previously defined in File Catalyst. One of the interesting things that you can do with the File Catalyst server now is I can actually define virtual files and virtual folders. So let's say I have a, a home directory that's not actually pointing at an S3 bucket, but I have a file that's hosted in S3 that I want to give access to that particular user. I can go ahead and create a virtual file now that points to the file system that I've defined and points to a particular file. In this case, I've pointed it to S3 Webinar Big File Zero. Now I can go ahead and assign that to a user, and when that user logs in, he's going to see all his local files that are on your local storage, but also a file that's sitting on S3. So he can now download a file that's on S3, or he can download files that are on your local storage. And very similar with a, a virtual folder, you can actually assign a subfolder. In this case, I pointed it to the, the subfolder within S3, but I could go in and I could change it to whatever I want. It's a very similar interface to the user home directory. I can make a virtual folder that's pointing to an Amazon S3 or local files, and then I assign that to, to user accounts. Then the user can access all their normal folders, plus they have a subfolder called S3 virtual folder. When they browse into that, they're browsing S3, and when they browse the other folders, they're browsing your local storage. All of it is transparent to them, and that, that, that makes it a really powerful feature. If I go back to my slides here. So as I was just discussing, um, you can map the home directory directly to a bucket or a subfolder within a bucket. Then you create the virtual folders or the virtual files at point. And this, this is, this, these can actually be assigned to a group as well. So you can assign a folder or a file to a group and the users gain access through that group. But it really makes it a powerful tool for sharing files. You don't, you have some content in S3, you have some content that's outside of S3. So you can either point your, your home directories directly to S3 in a subfolder or an entire bucket. You can point them to a local storage and have subfolders that are pointing to S3 or just individual files. So the ways to connect, it's very familiar if you're familiar with the File Catalyst uh, infrastructure and architecture. Um, we have our hot folder, our Express, all these clients, it's completely transparent. The File Catalyst server just looks at S3 as it would any other storage and you don't have to change a thing. Um, this is actually going to be backwards compatible with uh, previous versions of the clients. So again, it's just a file system um, and you can upload and download files just like you normally would. So what are we going to do next? Um, obviously this is a really quick demo. I didn't give you real demonstration of performance or, or some of the features I even talked about with virtual folders, but within, between now and uh, NAB, which is our big trade show uh, in the middle of April, we're going to finish all that up. Um, everything's going to be downloadable to try it, at the very least in uh, beta, uh, which is almost complete. Um, and the performance is going to be pushed to the limit. So as anybody who's used S3 knows, performance is very uh, highly dependent on the type of EC2 instance you have if you're moving files in and out through EC2 and the regions. You want to make sure those regions match. Um, one of the, the big things with S3 is even the HTTP uh, transfers are using HTTPS, so you can't turn that off. Not that I've found anyhow, so it, it actually, once you get to higher speeds, you're getting very high CPU usage. So what we found is that if you use compute optimized instances, you're going to get a lot better performance. There's also a enhanced networking uh, option available and it's only in the R3, C3, and I2 instance types. So that's your, your compute optimized uh, um, or your storage optimized instance types. Those are going to give you actually a higher packet per, per second. So they'll actually bind, instead of sharing a NIC, you're essentially getting your own NIC. 
it, but it does require that you use a, a VPC, which some of you may or may not do already. So that's that's just getting the performance up to snuff, um, and we'll have a document describing how you can do that. There's also going to be integration with uh, Falcalis Hot Folder. That won't be completed right away. That'll probably be more towards the fall. But then you're going to be able to map your hot folder directories so you can stick the hot folder in S3 and have it looking at your S3 and the server can be outside so you can, you can kind of reverse the situation. You could also use that to migrate between different file systems, uh, which I'll get to in a second. So uh, if you had, for example, the server sitting in S3 and hot folder sitting in Azure, you could actually move data from Azure blob storage to S3 or vice versa. So that brings me to the next point. Uh, because we've built on this Java NIO framework, any file system driver that's built on top of NIO can be plugged in. So there's existing libraries for encrypted file systems. That's something we get a lot of requests for. Um, something we'll be building is uh, a Microsoft Azure Blob uh, integration. So that'll work in much the same way, the same user interface. We'll actually provide a, a directory in the install uh, directory where you can plug in any of your own jar files. So if you have your own or you want to build your own and you conform to the NIO spec, you can just plug in your own file system. So I'm pretty much going to end it there, short and sweet. And I'll uh, take a look and see if you guys have posted any questions here. Okay, I don't actually see any questions, so uh, give a couple more minutes here, and if you want to have your question answered, pipe up now. Pop this thing out. Okay, well, if, uh, if there's no questions, then I'm going to uh, end the webinar. Thanks, everybody, for attending.